Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. All right, today we're going to talk about Harry and Meghan. So this is either your favorite topic or the topic that you hate. But uh, so whichever of those applies, uh, be uh, appra apprised that uh, that's what we're talking about today. So Harry and Meghan, we're just going to look into their psyches, see if we can figure out what's going to happen in their future uh, a little bit and um, and see maybe if they're going to get back with the royal family. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. So this is a pretty controversial topic for a lot of folks, but uh, we'll dive in and see what the cards can tell us about Harry and Meghan. Um, if they're going to uh, get back in with the royal family, if they're going to be successful, um, if the um, if I think that's it basically. So are they going to get back with the royal family, and um, are they going to be successful in their own lives? Which which means they're separate their lives separate from the royal family. I would ex think that what might happen if they were to do work for the royal family again is that they would still maintain their own lifestyles, trying to earn a living, um, however they're doing that, and um, and then also do uh, royal uh, stuff too. I don't know how the uh, the other uh, working royals kind of get paid, um, if in fact they do. So Harry and Meghan, let's see what the cards can tell us about them. And, um, and we'll go from there. But before we do any of that, let's have just a moment of meditation. Um, so yeah, it's either your, your favorite subject or the subject you don't want to talk about. Or the, the, the people that you like or the people that you hate. I am a Harry and Meghan fan, sorry to tell you. But that doesn't mean uh, that I'll skew the way the cards come out. If you've seen any of my Harry and Meghan videos, you'll see uh, they are just uh, the same way I read the cards for anybody else. So I'll read them for these two. I haven't done really anything specifically on them in quite a while. So this could be interesting. So Harry and Megan, uh, we're going to do a couple of uh, easy card draws, like maybe two or three card draws, just to kind of get a flavor of where they're at in their psyche. And then we'll um, do maybe a um, dyadic cross, which is just six cards. It's kind of the first part of a Celtic cross to see uh, what comes up. If it looks like that dyadic cross uh, needs more definition, then we'll do another four to make a full Celtic cross. But first, two cards, Harry and two cards, Megan, just to kind of see if the cards can let us know where this couple's heads are at. So this is Megan, and this is Harry. Harry. So Ten of Swords. The Ten of Swords is, um, you know, really um, uh, embattled. Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules of Law, by the way. And this showed someone, some, someone really left alone. Uh, with those ten swords up in the air, so I wonder if this is Megan, but, but and but I want to know about Harry, and then uh, the nine of cups is ready to show your emotional wares. So yeah, this looks like she is playing a major role in his life, and uh, it's uh, facing that truth, justice, rules, and law, and the ten of swords can be perilous, and then the nine of cups is all about emotion, but it's wanting to say, oh look at all my emotional well-being or my emotional trophies that I have. So this is Harry. This is Harry. Megan, uh, with whatever truth, justice, rules, uh, and law issues that comes with that, uh, but at the same time wanting to display, almost to abandon uh, his emotional um, prowess, perhaps. Now, Megan. First card for Megan is it shows us here the magician. And a lot of people would agree with that. They would say she thinks she's some kind of a witch. But uh, so the magician is. The Major Arcana, which there are no Major Arcana in the Harry's uh, thing. So this tells me maybe Megan has a big deal or a big uh, say in what their future is. And she's uh, pulling the strings. 
and then the seven of wands and the seven of wands is really overcoming a lot of things and but kind of successfully uh, battling them off and i tell you that kind of looks like uh, megan so harry's life is about megan and showing that he's emotionally uh, stable and uh, megan's life is about pulling all the strings and uh, and overcoming even these last uh, uh, obstacles so that's interesting let's put these back in the pack and let's go on to, uh, we want to know, are they going to join the royal family? Let's do, are they ever going to be working royals again? Are Harry and Meghan ever going to be working royals again? When I say ever, I don't really mean ever, do I? Because ever is a long time. Let's say, uh, will Harry and Meghan, um, in, in, in this part of their lives, whatever that might be. I would guess that's a 10-year situation, maybe five or 10-year span. But in this part of their lives, will they be involved with uh, doing work for uh, the monarchy? Let's do four cards. One, two, three, four. Will they be involved with doing work for the monarchy? First card up is the King of Swords. Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. And it's the King of Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law. King. Okay. So the, uh, it puts us on the foot of the monarchy somehow. And Truth and Justice, Rules, and Law. Next card up is the King, also, of Cups. Emotionals. Next is the Star. Okay. Shining bright. And the next one is the High Priestess. Truths. This is all very positive. Any of these by themselves would have been a Yes card. And together, they kind of uh, tell a deeper story. So it says, yeah, it looks like sometime in this section of their lives, so in the next five or ten years, within this next five or ten years, they're going to be doing some sort of um, a bidding for the monarchy. The King of Swords says it has to be having to do with truth, justice, rules, and law. The King of Cups, it says it will be tremendously emotional. The Star says, yeah, Somehow, either they will have the star power, or this star power will be attracted to them, or they'll be attracted to it. But it, it's a it's a shining, it's a spotlight on them. And you notice that the woman is featured here. And then the final card here is the high priestess, which talks to us about intuition and uh, and secrets, but in a in a positive sense uh, as far as secrets are, are talking about, but not in the in the more possibly negative sense that you might see in a moon card. And it's also significant here that we have two men and two women. So I think that this is the, the king here, what's good for the king, what's good for the monarchy, as far as being truthful and emotionally uh, sincere, is the first major part of this. The second major part is that, is that there may be some spotlight, some star dust on them, and a lot of people disagree with that, but just go with me, that uh, makes them useful. And it has to do with secrets, but in a, in a more um, majestic or sincere manner. I know a lot of people are going to hate that I said that. But now let's see, are they going to be successful financially in their lives? And again, in the same time period, in the same 10, 5 to 10 year period. Uh, I don't know if they are already being successful, if they're living off of the uh, millions that uh, Harry inherited and that Megan had, I think she had $6 million going into this uh, marriage. Uh, of course, they spent, I think, $15 million on that mansion and who knows what on renovations and furnishings, etc. And, of course, their bodyguards and their life. Um, but are they going to be financially successful in this section of their lives? And I mean this independent of anything the monarchy may have to do with them. So six cards. One, two, three four, five, six. And I'll warn you that I've had to work done here on the house. I almost didn't do a video today because of it. And so there may be some tools start up or some banging. We'll just see. Signifier card, are they going to be successful in this portion of their life? And uh, so we come up here with the seven of wands. I love it when the cards repeat. There's issues coming up that they're going to have to deal with. And it looks like Megan's in charge of a lot of their life. This is a, a hopeful card for issues. Okay, the challenge to it is uh, justice, <laughs> balancing, making sure that there's fair play. Uh, again, so many people are going to be because so many people just really don't like a Harry and Meghan, but this is what the cards say. You know, they're going to be dealing with issues in a very serene way, and it's challenged by 
finding a justice. The basis of this whole thing then is uh, strength. Of course it is. And again, it's interesting that the first three cards out of the bat are all about women. The uh, past to this is the Nine of Pentacles, and this is really being privileged. Okay, this is the privileged person. Lots of pentacles are, are value or money. And, uh, but that's in the past. Interesting. And in the sky of this reading is the King of Swords. He comes back again to tell us that it's about an aim of truth, justice, rules, and law. The challenge to this, this, uh, this uh, their financial viability is this King of Pentacles. The, or the, I'm sorry, not the challenge, but the likely outcome is King of Pentacles. So this is, is all positive, especially with a strong uh, Pentacle past and a very strong Pentacle future. So, yeah, I'm going to say that, yeah, in this section of their life, they are going to be uh, successful. I want to try to say just specifically Harry, just a real quick draw. Is Harry going to be involved in any significant way with the monarchy? So I was talking about them together, but I want to know if Harry specifically is going to be involved in any significant way with the monarchy in a more solo sense, or a more prominent sense, I guess, in this period of their life, the next five or ten year period. Three cards for that. One, two, three. So Harry, is he going to be successful in this piece of their life financially? And the bottom of the world comes back to the pentacles. Temperance, again, finding a balance. And strength, cards repeated. Yeah, he is. He's going to be... This is the um, privileged person. This is finding a balance, almost an angelic balance. If you notice the wings on this uh, temperance card, which is a, a major arcana card, and then the um, the strength card. So yeah, he is going to be successful uh, financially in this portion of his life in the next five or ten year period. That's what I got. Hi, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So, The Light Sears Tarot by Chris Ann. Wonderful cards. They're very beachy. They're very now. Uh, the container they come in is really nice. It has some nice thoughts inside. And um, the cards themselves and the guidebook, all of this is good. The, um, the guidebook, although it's not in color, it's readable. And uh, it gives some good ideas as to how you might uh, interpret some of these cards. Of course, you know, the interpretation is very personal. So you have to decide if those inter interpretations entirely work for you. But they're based on the Rider Waite system. And you can see that the art goes right to the edge of the cards. They're very colorful. They're very, uh, they just speak to you right away. I mean, you just, even if you didn't know what uh, uh, the symbols of the cards mean, I think anybody could look at some of these cards and think, oh, okay, this is what it means to me. Like I always say, I love to uh, have someone if we're going to do a reading, kind of spread the cards out like this, and then they kind of get into the game. They start looking at the art, and their mind sort of kind of gets into the uh, into the mode of of let's get some truth out here. Let's get some some tarot reading done. So, Light Sears Tarot, really, really nice cards.